This video is sponsored and approved by Century Films in support of their new YouTube original documentary, Terms and Conditions, a UK drill story, now available on GRM Daily's YouTube channel. Drill music. It's that extra scary form of gangster rap that your mother warned you to stay away from. The genre itself has often managed to evade definition, and to an outsider, a first glance at the grimacing and gun fingering of a drill video might lead you to immediately write it off as the devil's music. But then again, some of these rappers seem to come off so scary I doubt that Satan himself would even bop through Peck Nam with his Snapchat location left on. So the obvious and perhaps more sensible answer to the question of what is drill music might just simply be that it's tough sounding rap music where modern day rappers talk about the difficult street environments and problems going on in the communities they live in. But then again, if you're going with that definition, you could probably make a reasoned case that NWA were truly the original drillers. And if you watched my earlier video on the history of rap in Los Angeles dating all the way back to 1965, you'll know that tracing the true founder of one of rap's many different subgenres is always a very difficult task with many names up for debate. And so while I know that the most stone cold drill professors are waiting in the wings ready to put my head on a shank at the first sign of a mistake, at my own risk I would like to take a stab, excuse the pun, at tracing drill music back and finding out who its original founder was. So people, let's have a crack at answering once and for all, who started drill? It was Chief Keith, thanks for watching. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. Make sure that you go and follow me on Instagram at TraplawRoss. No, I'm just messing with you. Well, essentially, Chief Keef is essentially the let's just do a bunch of meth and do our entire dissertation the night before it's due answer. And when Chief Keef's career eventually blew up and he signed a whopping $6 million deal with Interscope, he was certainly the recipient of Drill Music's biggest W. However, many people have traced Drill Music's origins way further back than Chief Keef's career, suggesting that the true ground zero for Drill Music can actually be traced back to the Woodlawn neighborhood in Grow City on the south side of Chicago, as was documented in the famous Grow City DVD, apparently. In fact, Grow City City has a storied gang history dating all the way back to the late 50s when the Blackstone Rangers were founded. And we can pinpoint that it was a Dro City native who actually coined the term drill music, a phrase lifted from the street term for retaliating against your enemy. So essentially, we can kind of definitively say that the person who invented drill is, drum roll please, Pac Man, who I can only assume was an op of the Ghost Town Bloods. Dro City. Oh, my mama, I got a show on the tattoo. I got a show on the Dro City tattoo. Rest in peace, man. Sergio, aka Dro. Man, we getting it, man. Unfortunately, Pac-Man's claim to being the originator of drill music can never be claimed in person, as he was sadly taken from us before his time at the young age of 25. Pac-Man apparently rose to prominence after delivering a catchy hook on the song Street Money, alongside Count, which was circulating as early as February 2009, which led to him recording local street anthems like Dro Style, which came with a music video where he was wearing a garish but drippy set of checkered suspenders, looking like he came out the house to catch an op right in the middle of doing his tax return, as well as also picking up some steam with his song Madrids, which was about his dreads. But Pac-Man's songs didn't quite sound like that iconic Chicago drill sound that really came into its own later. So whilst this is the earliest artist that we can literally put under the header of drill music, in a sense we can kind of trace drill culture back in Chicago even further than the invention of its own name. Because if the area of Woodlawn between 63rd and 67th Street is where drill music started, the fact is this area actually got its name Drow City from a prehistoric driller named Samuel Spicer or Sarjo, who again was unfortunately taken from us before his time way back in 2007. And his close friend and another early driller was named Big Homie Dope, who also got some attention in the area for his 2009 track What Up, which was noticeably a lot more 2006 TI than the Chicago drill we came to know and love. And yet another artist that had started out in Pac-Man's shadows in the early foundations of drill music was King Louie, flying the flag of his Mubu Man Up Band Up crew. And King Louie was actually one of the first Chicago artists to make music that sounded like the iconic Chicago drill that we know today. King Louie dropped the mixtapes Boss Shit and Chirac Drillanoi, making a lot of noise for a Chicago driller at that time. He actually went on to sign with Sony Epic Records, as well as popularizing the money dance with the early track Money Dance alongside fellow early day driller Boss Wu, who himself had actually appeared on that same Dro City track earlier on with Pac-Man, making him yet another certified prehistoric driller and proving that it's all connected, baby. Now, it didn't take long here for Drill's most recognized and iconic flag flyer Chief Keef to emerge, and with his iconic style and aesthetic, he eventually took over the game with his Back From The Dead mixtape featuring that earth-shattering track 
I don't like. A mixtape which was entirely produced by the true master of the Chicago Drill sound, Young Chop. But of course from here, Chicago Drill music went from strength to strength. And of course, as well as talented artists, we also saw a lot of novelty acts coming out of the fray too. Such as infant driller Lil Mouse, who dropped the song Get Smoked, catching the attention of Lil Wayne. Then again, I'm not necessarily sure I'm that worried about getting smoked by a driller who's literally seven years too young to buy a pack of backwards. I heard he's merged loads of his ults, they just go to a different school, so you've, you've never heard of them. Thing is, there is something that's always bothered me about drill music. If Chicago is a Wuhan market and Batman is a delicious bowl of bat soup, then Chief Keef is essentially a drunken spring breaker trying to make out with as many British dudes as he possibly can before the quarantine kicks in. Because unless you haven't been outside in years, but then again, let's be honest, if you're watching this in a few years time, maybe that's true, you'll be aware that drill music spread far and wide beyond the borders of Chicago in the years that followed. And so what was truly crazy is the fact that for once in the history of hip hop, jolly old England finally had some influence. So next question up for debate, who started UK drill? I love Chris Rich. It was Sticks from 150. Thanks for watching. What's up, guys? Thanks so much for watching. And please, I really mean it when I say go and follow your boy at Trap Law Ross on Instagram. I'm so tired of girls making fun of me for not having many followers. And I got you again. Yes, many people have credited Sticks, M Dog, and Grizzy from the 150 crew out of Brixton, Angel Town, for being the true originators of UK drill, having dropped some very early examples way back in 2013. Sure, in the music, the Chicago influence was very clear, but they brought originality to the game by using the authentic UK lingo, rocking that roadman tracksuit swag, and filming videos in iconic London blocks and ends. But then again, I know that there's a lot of purists out there that think drill music is really just concerned with any kind of rap music that deals with the reality of street life in the area that it's recorded in. And so for that reason, what Pac-Man is to Chief Keef, Johnny Wayne of Gas Gang is to Styx and 150. The rapping members of the Gas Gang crew were very much the previous incarnation of some of the drill outfits that we've seen rise to prominence in the 2010s. Because the likes of Johnny Wayne and other members were there way back in 2009 and even before, using their verses, bars, music videos, and ciphers to give viewers and listeners a glimpse through the keyhole into the day-to-day -day life of a youth growing up on the challenging streets of London. Wayne wasn't the only one, of course. We had people like RA from the Roadside Gs and countless others who were drilling before drilling was even a thing over dusty Waka Flocka style reject beats. Hell, you could even consider what Giggs was doing on the mic as early as 2005 for truly laying the foundations for drill as we know it today. Bloody leave a pattern on your belly like a f***ing care bear Carry me on fronting like I don't know where you're at I turn up at your crib and spray with decorate your flat Wow, I didn't know gigs did home improvements too, good to know. And so whilst the unique sound of UK drill production as we know it today would eventually emerge from the unique beat production of British producers, initially British drillers were borrowing inspiration in their beats from the likes of DJ L and Lil Herb from Chicago as was noticeable on tracks like Hazards from Lofsky. But it was around 2015 that the UK drill scene really begun to cement its own mark with an original sound that was mastered by British producers like Carnes Hill, Ghosty, BK, M1 on the beat and I've got to give an honourable mention to my boy Chris Rich who is killing it in the drill scene at the moment. And of course, much like we saw Chief Keith in Chicago, the UK drillers eventually managed to take over the mainstream and make an enormous dent in the charts. With the likes of Harlem Spartan getting a very prestigious cosign from Drake, which I covered in an entire video on the channel, as well as Russ, Digger D, Heady One and Unknown T, all taking their catchy hooked UK drill anthems straight to the bank. Unfortunately for the UK drill scene, its rise to prominence came with a lot of negative press and attention. And this genre that provided a route to youth that were growing up in tough and challenging environments to change their life few music begun getting targeted by the authorities. I know I started this video out by saying that in some ways you could consider NWA's music as a very early incarnation of what drill culture was all about. In the UK we've had drill rappers like Skengdo and AM getting the NWA treatment as recently as 2018, getting banned from performing on stage and even being handed suspended sentences just for playing AM's banger of a song Attempted 1.0. And that in itself is a whole other story so if you want to get an in-depth look at how the UK drill music scene has clashed with authorities, as well as some harrowing stories about how people's lives have been affected by UK drill culture, for good or for bad, both indirectly and directly, I would definitely recommend you go and check out the new YouTube originals film, Terms and Conditions, A UK Drill Story, which is now available to stream on GRM Daily's channel, and you can check out by hitting the link in my description. It's one of the most in-depth and balanced explorations of the topic that's out there and definitely worth a watch. Whether you're an American looking to learn more about what we've got going on over here in the UK scene, or whether you're a Brit who just wants a bit more of an in-depth look at some of the more nuanced issues relating to the scene. Also, shout out to your number one journalist, Mr. Montgomery, who did an amazing job presenting that documentary, as well as also running a wicked YouTube channel where he covers a lot of UK drill related content that is relevant to this story. And also he's just a super safe dude, so salute to him.
Now, the UK drill sound has since been co-opted and bitten, with excellent outcomes from New York drill rappers of the modern era and beyond. Overseas, we've had producers like Axel producing UK sounding beats for huge mainstream artists like Drake on the track War and Gatti from Travis Scott's Jack Boys project. And of course, there's the recently deceased driller Pop Smoke, who was early to the party and has been widely credited with popularizing the UK drill production sound in the US over the past few years. However, of course, we need to give an honorable mention to your boy Bobby Schmurda, who is importing the drill style of music from Chicago to New York long before that UK drill sound had even been developed, which was of course pushed forward by people like the pioneer of saying the word Blicky and the most unusual size for a pouch of backy 22 G's. Him, along with the likes of Chef G and Flevo Foreign, were using UK style beats early in the game, even making nods towards the UK culture by appearing on British YouTube music platforms like Press Play, Mixtape Madness, and even collaborating with UK drillers, such as the long-suffering partner of one of the most unreliable men in UK music, tapes. And all of these crossover moments did wonders for pushing the worldwide drill movement forward. And much like the terrifying virus that currently seeks to destroy us all, drill continues to rapidly spread beyond borders, infecting traps and bandos all over the planet. In the UK, we saw regional acts emerging, such as 2-3 Drillers in Birmingham. In Ireland, we saw your boy Mr. Affiliate, JB2, a rapper that raps so offbeat he somehow doubles back and ends up sounding fire anyway. Blueface, you got to take note of this guy. And more recently, we've seen Ink, another Irish masked driller, whose terrifyingly inspired mask makes M Huncho's look basic AF. Huncho, you need to get the crayons out, mate. You're looking like a Poundland MF Doom out here. And of course, I'd probably get shanked in the eye, mate, if I didn't mention the absolutely astounding rise of drill over in Australia. With the likes of 1-4 and their Ops 21 District making some of the most interesting sounding drill music that I've ever heard in recent years. And so as drill continues to permeate rap cultures all over the world, there is honestly too many to mention. So don't at me with people that I've forgotten. Oh, Trap Law Ross, what about this obscure driller in a country I've never heard of? Ooh. Actually, you know what? Come to think of it, you probably should do that. Leave a comment down below if you want me to do a video about all the worldwide drillers in all different countries that maybe I haven't necessarily been tuned into. And if you're from a country with a rising drill scene that you think the world needs to be paying attention to, DM me some of their stuff on Instagram. I'm at Traplaw Ross. I'll give it a listen. And hey, if I get enough interesting submissions from places all around the world, I'll put together a little video about all the different kinds of drill that are all over the planet that maybe people have missed out on. Hope you enjoyed that one. Thanks again for watching. And until next time, peace. What's going on guys? It's your boy Traplaw Ross. I hope everybody is doing well and taking care of themselves out there. It's really scary what's going on and I hope that we're all taking it serious. Staying inside, washing our hands and doing everything we've got to do to fight this thing. Because we've got to beat it and we're going to be okay if we just stick together, do the right things and look out for each other. I want to thank everybody that's been supporting me on Patreon so far. I really appreciate all of your support. And to be honest, I don't think it'd be right to just take people's money in this current situation when so many people are in need. So I'm going to take all of the money that came through on Patreon in March. I'm going to make sure that that goes to a foundation or charity or, or some kind of organization that's helping those that most need it in this difficult time. Um, and I'm open to suggestion. If you guys want to hit me on Instagram or in the comments or whatever, let me know what, what organizations you think are most worthy of this. I'm going to do a bit of research over the next few days. And uh, by the end of the month, I'll give that money to uh, whoever, you know, to some people who need it. And uh, on an ongoing basis, you know, any more patrons or anything like that, um, I'll make sure that that goes to a worthy cause that's helping those that need it more. And in addition to that, going forward, uh, I want to find new ways that I can help uh, leverage my platform to try and help people with what's going on. So I uh, don't know how that's going to look at this stage. No one really knows what's going to happen, but hopefully um, I'll come up with something cool. I don't know whether that's going to be some live streams, uh, trying to raise money for specific organizations that need it. Uh, maybe some sponsored videos where the, the funds will be going to organizations or people in need. Open to suggestions, and I'd really appreciate people's thoughts and suggestions. And I really appreciate everyone's support. It means a lot to me. And of course, I want to give a huge shout out to the patrons. That's Antonio Groza, Bash the Prince, Chris J, Claire Audium, DJ Fred 100, Griffin Fuller, Henry Bryant, Jaden Cho, Jason Wyman, Javier Gonzalez, Jessica Simmons, Kizzlebot, Niraj Shukla, Otaku VS, Penis Bag McPenis Face, yeah, I said it, Pyromancer, Vivi, and Wilson Psychedelic, as well as all the other names that you see on screen right now. Thank you so much for your support and for being so generous. I hope that everybody out there will continue to be generous, not necessarily to me or to my channel, but just in general and to others. Let's take this thing seriously. Let's get through it, guys, and we're all going to be okay. I appreciate you watching. Looking forward to bringing you guys more content and more entertainment soon so that you can forget your woes because there's a whole lot of BS going on out there that we would all rather forget about. So thank you very much, and until next time, peace out.